The Cowboys paid Zeke a gazillion dollars when no one was paying running backs. So why are you not just getting CD in the building? Because the Cowboys, like, I actually think the Niners, I know I said they're going to pay them, but I don't think they're going to pay them more than they're willing to pay them because I think they are a more disciplined front office who's going to do it. Jerry's too sentimental to be disciplined like that. And so he's going to pay CD. He's not going to let him walk out the door. And now it's like, just pay him now. And oh, by the way, if you pay him now, then you can tell David Mulligetta and Micah Parsons agent that, well, you don't have the money because you paid CD. Like, just be done with this part of the equation. They, they just wait to pay every single person. And I think that that is so unhelpful. Yeah. I mean, how about not even just pay him now? How about pay him like five months ago? You know, uh, just get like, if you get ahead of this stuff, or even two years ago, like what? Why not just have paid him before last season? You know that that's a whole other thing. Like literally waiting until the last minute with multiple players does get you into this situation. Um, so I do want to talk about some of these like contracts and 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 Cowboys and all that stuff. But before that, I just wanted to kind of throw this at you, Jory, because we taped the first episode of Football Three Hundred One, new podcast. If you haven't listened to it already, Heck yeah, it's with me, so Charles excited. McDonald, Nate Tice. I am very excited. Literal that first episode dream was great. team. I mean. People are saying it. Um, you said I it, am me. among the people saying it. <laughs> so we projected out our top 10 offenses in 2024, and none of us had the Cowboys in the top 10. Uh, some people on Cowboys Twitter were pissed about it. Got a lot of comments and feedback on that yesterday, which I thought was fascinating because, yes, as many Cowboys fans pointed out, the Cowboys were like, you know, top four in points per game the last three years. By the way, let's remember the exercise was ranking the top 10 offenses of this year, not last year. And if I'm not mistaken, Joy, has everybody not been pointing out all offseason that this team, you know, didn't certainly didn't get better, but may have gotten actively worse on offense this year? Like, is it so outrageous to think that the Cowboys could take a step back offensively? I don't think it's outrageous to think that. I think that they lost their center in Tyler Biotish. They lost their left tackle in Tyron Smith. Historically, when Dallas's offensive line has not been very solid, they have not been able to do what they needed to do as an offense. Also, like, who are you afraid of in the running game? Um, I mean, I still think that, like, Dak and their passing game have a lot of options. If anything, I would be more willing to say that I think the Cowboys will be a top 10 offense than I will that they will be a top 10 team in terms of win records mm. because I think they're very good at inflating the score, particularly against NFC East teams and other teams who are probably not going to make the yeah. playoffs. So that to me might be what gets them statistically in top 10 offense, but they had years under Kellen Moore where they were like top offense but not getting where they wanted to go in the playoffs. Um I do think, though, that from the run game and the offensive line game, I mean, the run game and the run defense, both sides, I think there's a lot of reasons to be concerned for Dallas. So I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And we were ranking it based off like DVOA, you know, the old football yeah. outsiders have now FTN, not number one, not like yards and points and stuff like that, because, yeah, that stuff can be inflated. I mean, and you can even inflate DVOA. Of course, they like adjust for opponents, which does help. But, yeah, it, it's almost kind of akin to what we said about the Dolphins and we were just we did just kind of met like passing mention the Dolphins it's like yeah super bo- like great offense one of the most creative in the league but it's almost boring to talk about because it's just like hey do it when it's cold outside as Charles said um, yeah. and and with Dallas it's kind of similar like great you put up forty five points against the the Giants who are going nowhere like do it against a real team so I don't know I mean, look from a personnel perspective this is this is not a not a good group of skill position players i mean you got producer colin sending me like jalen tolbert cope tweets every other every other day i mean it's outrageous what's going on here so um i don't know i think that's interesting just in the background of everything else that's going on with dallas jory so um i just want to have a play a quick little cowboys game here before i get you out of here simple little racing game i'm going to give you a name and you tell me how close you think they are to a deal uh, we're going to do four, the four guys that they, you know, are basically having to work on extensions with right now, which Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons. And I'm going to throw Mike McCarthy in the mix, too. Uh, okay. So first of all, Dak Prescott, first lap, second lap or final lap? I'll say second lap. I think, first of all, when you have a quarterback who has already negotiated a contract with this specific team, negotiate an extension, you're not in the first lap. You understand where you're coming from. He hasn't switched agents since that last deal. He has showed what he's capable of. He's also showed what he hasn't yet done in the playoffs. So I don't think they're final. I would be very surprised if they get a deal done before this season. I just don't think it's how the Cowboys operate, and I think they are being very intentional about letting a lot of guys prove it this year. Um but it's not it's not first lap. Like 
they know what generally they're going to need to do. And the question is just, do they do it now or do they do it in a year? Because the price will be different. CD Lamb, first lap, second lap, final lap. I'll say final lap because I think he'll be the first one that gets done. I think he's going to need to get done this year if they want him to play. And I do think they want him to play, going back to what you just said about the uh, the dearth of skill position players that really scare you on the Dallas offense. And CDs are obviously at the top. The question is, how quickly are they running that final lap? Because I think since they're on the final lap, if they want it done before they get the pads on, they can. I don't think that they're going to do that. I think they're going to overpay him in a month. They need to hit that little Mario Kart yeah. bucket thing and get one of them mushrooms and they need to speed this thing yeah, along. Yeah, if you could here. hand that mushroom, although you gotta be careful what mushroom you're handing, Jerry, but <laughs> hey, you're not wrong about that. Um by the way, I don't know if you I, just my take on this, I don't know if you can overpay C D Lamb. Like he's I I get that he's not Justin Jefferson, but Do you want Dak ra- on the team next year with him? I would I would rather have C D Lamb and like start over at quarterback than okay. like than have Dak Prescott and not have C D Lamb. That's fair. I, that's that's just like my personal no, opinion here. I think that's here. an understandable take. I think it's not that you're overpaying CD relative to what he can do. It's that you are screwed to keep your quarterback if you pay anyone like the Vikings who don't need to pay a quarterback pay their receiver. Yeah, I, that's a that's a fair point. Um, if you're starting over a quarterback, I want number eighty eight there running slant routes better than anybody else in the business. And my last thing is you're overpaying him because if you paid him six months ago, it would yeah. have cost you less. So you're overpaying him because you chose not to listen to the market, which has not changed its trajectory. Today's price is not yesterday's price, as they say. Okay, final player here, Micah Parsons, first lap, second lap, final lap. I'll say first lap. I think that they're not going to do Micah now before they get Dak and CD figured yes. out. Whether or not they sign them, I think they are going to make those decisions before they make the Micah decision. He also, what? three years in and then you have the year four and then you have the fifth year option and then you have two franchise tags i do believe that because he's a david mulligata player he will use the leverage he has i also think that that is much more about holding out like he can't go anywhere for like four years yeah they're barely out of the gates on that one much less uh, like halfway through the first lap okay final one mike mccarthy first lap second lap final lap or are they still just they even they're not even brought the car out I was going to say that was going to be my answer. I don't think they've started the race. Now, look, do they understand the race that they need to run if they want to get there? Yes. These guys have been together for five years now. They understand what they're working with. I think they want him to prove it. I think that Jerry hired him and said, look, this is a guy who won a Super Bowl there. I was just in Green Bay. I drove right past the Mike McCarthy way sign. And that's what Jerry brought him to Dallas or to Frisco, Texas for. That's not what he's done. They didn't bring him to lead a really productive offense because they had that before he got there. They brought him to take them ideally to the Super Bowl, but at the very least to the NFC Championship game. And so I think if Jerry's honest with himself, that should be the threshold for Mike McCarthy this year. But we say that every year. And then he's still there. So I don't think we should bank on Jerry being honest with himself about why he brought in Mike. I am just very fascinated with this offense, not because I ranked them outside of the top 10, um, but just like we're, we we kind of have this morose sort of view of the team at this point. And at the same time, though, like none of that has really trickled into the top players in terms of how we view them for fantasy. Right. But I, I wonder if that is the case. Like, can CeeDee Lamb repeat the year that he had last year if the team takes a step back? I, I don't. I don't think so. We think about it like, oh, yeah, the, maybe the team's not as good. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot more. You want to be in efficient, advantageous situations with your top receiver talent. And I, I just wonder if that's going to be the case. Yeah. No, I think it's a great question. The other thing I want to ask you is, this is my selfish part speaking. I loved working with Zach Prescott. I live in New York now. Is there any chance the Giants get Dak next year? I know that he was, I think, talking today and mentioned all these great quarterbacks and saying how, hey, look, even the Peyton Mannings of them went to another team at the end of their career. I want to know from you, one, is there any chance you think the Giants get Dak? And two, is there any chance that they will be, like, set up for Dak to succeed there? Like, you'll have neighbors, but will you have an Mm. offensive line? Like, what are our options here? I mean, I think that's one of the few places. Look, the best laid plans go to hell pretty quickly in the NFL. And, like, we're looking at it now. Like, yeah, this team looks set up. This team looks set up. Um, But we could feel very differently about a variety of these quarterbacks. Like, you know, the Rams dumped Matthew or dumped Jared Goff to get Matthew Stafford at the beginning of that season. I don't know that anybody felt like Jared Goff was on the hot seat. Right. But by the end of the right. year, Sean McVay. So just so over the Jared Goff experience, he's got to do something. 
he ends up I mean, getting the Matthew Giants Stafford. have made pretty clear on hard knocks. They are not committed to Daniel Jones. And I was going to say and that, that situation is not what's happening in New York where it's the other way around. But I just wonder if there's a team like that does seem to have a quarterback firmly entrenched that has an opening. But yeah, they're one that certainly seems to have an opening that I think he would Dak Prescott would probably want to go to. It's a big market. I think Brian Dayball is still a good offensive coach. I think Mike Kafka has shown positive time signs as the um, OC. But at the same time, are those guys going to be the ones making the decision if the Giants had of a bottom out year where they're getting rid of their quarterback and all of that stuff? Those are the things that are just unknowable.